Natural harmonics are a great way to add variety and spice to a song. In fact, there's a Zeppelin song that features harmonics at the beginning, and I just cannot remember the name right now. Nonetheless, it's an awesome technique. And in this lesson, I'm going to share with you the three crucial things that you need to have in place to have awesome harmonics. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to show you a great way to use harmonics in a very, very surprising way. All that right after this. This acoustic guitar quick win is brought to you by Tony'sAcousticChallenge.com. I'm Tony Policastro from Tony'sAcousticChallenge.com, where we're all about expanding our quality of life through music and having as much fun as possible with our acoustic guitars. And today, I want to talk about natural harmonics. The first thing that you need to know for natural harmonics is the location. Where can you make the harmonics? Well, natural harmonics are located actually all over the string, but there's three very common locations. The first is at the 12th fret, the second location is at the 7th fret, and the last and final location is at the 5th fret. Now, I listed those in uh, a descending order, or rather ascending order of difficulty. The 12th fret harmonics are relatively easy to hit. It's the halfway point of the string, so it's easy to get the note and easy to get good sound out of them. And then the seventh fret are a little bit more difficult. And then the fifth fret are notoriously hard uh, because you have to have your finger in the exact right spot. So that's your first tip is know your locations. The second is have your fretting finger do the right thing. Position your fretting finger in the right spot. Well, where is the right spot to achieve a natural harmonic? It's actually directly over your intended fret. So let's look at the 12th fret. I wanna hit these harmonics on the 12th fret. And I wanna have my middle finger, ring finger, doesn't matter which finger you use, you wanna be touching the string but not fretting the string. Okay, so you're just touching the string right over the fret, literally the metal fret, that's, that's vertical here, you want your finger directly over that fret, not behind, not in front of, because if you're in front of it, you're not gonna get harmonics, and if you're behind it, you're not gonna get harmonics. However, if you're directly over it and you're slightly touching the string, you'll get wonderful sounding harmonics. In fact, that's a great way to find out where the harmonics are. Uh, with one finger on the high E string, you can start way behind the fret and then slowly move forward. And you can hear it kind of sink in. So if you're having a hard time finding out where those harmonics are, go ahead and do that little troubleshooting technique. It'll help you out a ton. And that particular, uh, that, that fretting hand position is true for the seventh fret and the fifth fret. You wanna be touching the string, not fretting it, not, not bringing it to the fretboard, but just touching the string directly over your intended fret. So if your intended fret is the 12th fret, directly over the 12th fret. If your intended fret is the seventh fret, directly over the seventh. And of course, directly over the fifth if your intended fret is the fifth fret. So now you know the locations, you know how to make the harmonics with your fretting hand, but the last and final tip is how to optimize your harmonics so that they sound good and ring out loud and clear. And of course, finding the position is half the battle there, but once you have that position, how do you make them sound even better? Well, there's a little trick I like to use, and it actually involves pulling my finger away from the string after I ring the harmonic. So I'm gonna just use that high E string, and I'm gonna barely touch that high E string over the 12th fret. With my picking hand, I'm gonna strike the string, that's a good sounding harmonic. I just left my finger right on the string. But to optimize your harmonic, once you pluck the string, remove your fretting finger. And you'll get a really nice ringing open sounding harmonic. And you can do that for any of the fret positions on the 12th fret. All the way to the fifth fret. Whoops. And actually, I just stumbled on a nice little tip that I wanted to offer. It takes a little bit of timing to get that to get that down. So at first, if you're struggling even making the harmonics, leave your finger down. But once you're consistently making good harmonics, start to practice uh, removing that fretting finger so that you can get those nice, open, ringing tones, which harmonics are so incredibly awesome at. Now, 
One more thing, I've got a little bonus for you, a little secret, a little guitar ninja trick, if you will. Harmonics are great for spicing up a song. You can add really cool atmospheric sounds, you can end a song really tastefully, you can begin a song really elegantly, but there's actually a great utility that harmonics serve. Let's say your clip-on tuner is nowhere to be found, but you know your low E string is in tune. You can use harmonics to tune your guitar even more exactly than just by fretting your guitar and doing relative tuning. The standard way to relative tune your guitar is to hold down the fifth fret of the low E string and match it to the A string. And then the same for the A and the D. Same for the D and the G. It's a little different between the G and the B. We're gonna fret the fourth fret of the G string and match that to our open B string. And then the B and the high E's back to the fifth fret. So that's all well and good, but harmonics give us a little bit more of an exact uh, measure, gauge, if you will, to tune. So we can hit the fifth fret harmonic on the low E string and match it to the seventh fret harmonic on the A string. That'll sound like this. And then the same is true for the A and the D. Fifth fret harmonic on the A, seventh fret harmonic on the D. You'll be able to hear the overtones much clearer when you use the harmonics. And the same is true between the D and the G string. Fifth fret on the D, seventh fret on the G. And then we go to the old fashioned way. Fourth fret of the G to the open B string. Not using harmonics there. And then back to the B and the high E. Fifth fret harmonic on the B. And then the seventh fret harmonic on the high E. It's a nice, cool little utility trick so that you can use your natural harmonics. Now, I hope you totally dug this lesson, and I hope it created light bulb moments for you. In fact, at the beginning, I mentioned a Led Zeppelin song that uses harmonics, and I still cannot remember the name of it. So if you happen to know the name of that tune in particular, please leave it in the comments below. And speaking of comments, let me know what you thought of the lesson down below. Did I forget something that would be awesome for, for other guitar players to know? Go ahead and leave it in the comments. Let me know what you thought. And if you like this lesson, I know that you're absolutely gonna love my five-day acoustic guitar challenge. This is such a cool challenge because you're gonna learn new techniques, you're gonna get new licks and tricks that you can add to your playing immediately, and it's gonna help bolster your practice routine. It's really easy to sign up. It takes less than 10 seconds. All you have to do is click on the link here in this video or in the description below, enter your email, and you can start your very first acoustic guitar challenge today. I really hope you sign up. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you on the lessons.